I know the world's a crazy place and we're concerned about security, but Patriot Nation wants the answer to this question. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Do you mind if we take a break from uh, the worries of the world uh, like we have been focused on this week and just talk about the most important question for football fans, at least around here, and that is, what's Brady doing? Let's just get to it. Here's the headline. And there's, here's the social media headline post or what and whatever. And uh, he's got a lot to prove. Well, no kidding. And here's what he said after the game, right? I know that you keep saying that. You don't know what's going to happen in the future. Is there any possibility that you would retire after the, this last season? Uh, I, you know, I, I would say it's pretty unlikely, but yeah, hopefully unlikely. Again, I don't want to get too much into the future and stuff. I mean, this team has fought hard. You know, we battled every day. We tried to get better. We worked hard to improve, and um, you know, it's proud to be a part of this team. Not only this year, but every year. Kind of a bad hat, don't you think? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I figure we could mix in some uh, old President Denison in this. I tried to set up my daughter with Tom Brady. Said no. Now look at what's happening. <laughs> Ivanka never would have nagged the way Giselle does. You could have played forever. All that stuff. Uh, Andy Gresh is in the house. Uh, half of them, anyway. Does anybody not talk to you about your weight loss? Ah, uh, no. People are actually pleasantly happy and surprised for you, but... I, they all think I'm sick. If I wear, shocked, if I wear a hat... Shocked is, 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 a, is, a, is a word that has been used. Uh, and everyone knows that, you know, we're pals, so it's like, what, is Gresh okay? Is he okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but you blew my, you know, I lost 30 pounds and nobody blinked. The I'm down 110. Yeah. Right. It's amazing. I'm still 255. It's not like I'm a, it's not like I shrunk. It's yeah. like they put me in the dryer, you yeah, know what I mean? Not, you're not emaciated. No, gosh, no. I'm just, I don't look like a tick that's about to pop. Words that have never been uttered on the Dave York state of mind because it completely paused him right now. Let's get the foot. But let's just clarify, you feel good. Yeah. Good. You know me, I've always had energy. Yeah. Now I can go buy, there are people will buy stuff for me. Now I got the Easter egg outfits working. Yeah. Yeah. Same past, for you. You got the, all those pastel, pastel colors. colors. I so, noticed. So, uh, so welcome to the world of not, you know, just dressing in black and white for crying out loud. I've noticed on Easter week that you had, you run the whole gamut here on the Dan York State of Mind of all of the pastel colors of Easter eggs. Don't think I don't pay attention to what's going on here. Oh, uh, my goodness. Well, this is what you so have to the, do in, when you don't know uh, if Tom Brady's coming back. In the middle of this uh, very difficult week news-wise. Mm -hmm. I mean, difficult in the sense that a lot of controversy and national security concerns and all that kind of stuff. I asked the question at the beginning of the week, what's more important to, uh, to people in general in New England? And I did it only, only mm -hmm. tongue-in-cheek. Well, I should say only half tongue-in-cheek because it really speaks to what sports is in a lot of ways. It's our place of recreation and getting away, but we are not passive about it. No. So it's really interesting where it falls into the mix, especially after the law. So you can break all that down if you like. You got the floor. No, but, but, I, but I... talk to me about how you sense that. I, 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 to your point, there has been the whole, wow, this could come to an end, and we're dealing with those emotions. But, you know, overall, there are probably more people in the state of Rhode Island that are more worried about Tom Brady than what Mattiello and Ruggiero and all those people are going to do at the state house right that now. That for sure, but not necessarily what we're doing with you know killing a general and figuring out no. what's going on oh, there. Yeah, of course, and I think some people will kind of get caught up on that because it's like, whoa, <laughs> what? Would, you know, so it's, it's well, a, you would think so. It's because, American security well, issue. Well, right, by the but way. how many people were sitting around thinking, you know, boy, is Brady going to the Chargers or wow, what's up with Iran? You know what I mean? Like, I, it, it's one of those deals where I think you kind of catch up on the story and there's a little of that with this Brady story too here Dan because what Tom Brady did and and the the clip that you played there in his mind he's thinking 
How can I answer this question without telling them that I'm really going to hold Bill Belichick's feet to the fire and maybe go to free agency? Is really what I thought was going through the old skull there for Tom Brady because he does have a contract in place for next year. The difference is, is that Brady can cut the cord on it, pull the plug, and the Patriots would be left with a big cap hit. Brady would then be free to go shop his wares, but if he came back, he would be leaving behind a big salary cap charge to where people think Brady can go. Nobody understands test. that. Well, Hang well, on. Well, no, I will. Do, but. <clears throat> but he wants to go see if other teams are interested in him. He's going to leave behind a monetary hit that, in a way, takes money out of his pocket. Or it's a charge that the Patriots have to endure because they gave Brady the ability to unplug from his contract right, so to go nobody into free agency. So explain, so what, what is the financial structure? It, it, most people would think if somebody leaves, they leave with their salary, um, it, it, the, the company, the team. Right is not obligated to pay the salary of the departed player. And that is correct. However, when you give a player a bonus in the NFL, you amortize that over the years of the contract. So because the Patriots didn't really handle this very well in 2016, 2017. What did they do? Well, they didn't give Brady the longer term deal then. In 2017, they probably should have given Tom Brady a longer extension where the money escalated so that here in 2000 before the 2019 season that they just played it was like well we got to get Brady more money and they did it in a way to where it was going to leave behind a little bit of a salary cap mess for them if Brady said I don't want to play here anymore and he wants to go to free agency so the so Patriots so, could have so there's an accounting of did he get his bonus he got his bonus at the beginning of this year and they did a funny, what they call in the NFL, it's almost like a funny money three-year contract. So it was Tom Brady, here is $21 million right now in a check. Thank you very much, sir. But because they did it as a three-year contract, the money gets broken up. So it would be, say, $21 million divided by three. So if they didn't pay Tom Brady his salary, if Tom Brady leaves or if the Patriots cut him, all of that bonus money then gets accelerated onto the Patriots' salary cap, so it lowers the money in which they can spend on players. Got you. All right, so it's a financial burden whether he stays or goes. If he stays, you need to rework whatever existing contract there is to make Brady whole, to try to have as much cap space to put people around him to make him happy and he keep wants him here. That. Dan, I think at the end of the day, what Tom Brady wants is the adulation of the organization. Fans will kiss his rear end all day long. What he wants to hear from Bill Belichick is, we need you. That's what he wants to hear. Now, old Hoodsworth ain't going to do that. So Brady should know by now after 20 years that Bill's not going to go all lifetime movie of the week on him and try to pet him like a dog and make him feel good. It's more about the business of football. And Bill Belichick can look at Tom Brady and say, if you want to come back, you can come back, but we have to figure out how to make you happy monetarily, but keep money so we can go get people around you. And if Tom Brady goes to free agency and takes visits with other teams, that can become harder for the Patriots well, to be able well, to get that what done. What is, other than a hug and a kiss that you think's not coming, what, what is the actual message of, you know, we love you and we need you? Um, how is it articulated? It seems to me it's articulated not just by retaining him and making him whole. It's by building a better receiving core at all mm -hmm. around him because clearly he's out of patience with the lack of resources that he had, right? Yeah, there are a lot of people who look at it and say, well, Tom Brady, just give him, give him money, give him money, give him money. I, Brady's never been about the money. Brady's been about winning. So he makes moves based on winning. So when people keep harping on the money, I don't think it's about that. I think if they say, we value you, Tom, if you come back and work with us, here's, what we're, here's our plan to put people around you. Because remember, we got Will that to, go down to names and numbers or just concepts? I, I think it's concepts, and I think it's Brady. If they say to Tom, what do you think we need to get better? Well, we need left tackle, we need tight end, we need a wide receiver. 
they might be able to get Brady's input on it a little bit and have an idea. Now, Bill Belichick has done a pretty good job over a 20-year period of putting together football teams, but I think there's a lack of trust with Tom Brady relative to Bill Belichick. So he knows, if Brady said, all right, I'm coming back, let's figure this out, not only would he get Tom Brady at a reduced rate as they tweak that contract, but then Belichick could say, well, this is the way I've always built the football team around you, Tom. I've shopped right. in the cheap section. Now I'm not I, bringing in studs. Now I think I get it. In a way, you ready for this one? Here we go. When we come back, it's almost like the impeachment story. Next. No, I'm not holding him indefinitely. I'll send him over when I'm ready. And that will probably be soon. I don't... You know, he said, if you don't send him over, I'm going to pass the Mexico-U.S.-Canada trade agreement. Okay. Uh, but, uh, no, we, we, we want to see what they're willing to do and the manner in which they will do it. But we will not let them say, oh, this is just like Clinton, fair is fair. It's not. Now, the analogy obviously couldn't be direct, but as you were explaining to me this this kabuki dance that uh, Tom Brady is doing with Belichick and the organization, it, it's, it, it, it reminded me of what's going on with the impeachment uh, case, and that is she won't send articles of impeachment until she is comfortable knowing what it is that the Senate is going to do for a trial, including witnesses and the like. Okay, here's a translation. I'm not going to say I want to come back to the Patriots until you already articulate to me, A, that you love me, you want me, and that you're going to build a team around me. Does Ooh. that make any sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. And I really think that's where it's at because what Bill Belichick does is, and it's worked for him pretty much every year, he shops in the bargain basement bin, okay? So they may need a left tackle. They could draft a left tackle, or they could go sign a beat-up veteran who might just want a one-year contract that the Patriots can live with they know that Brady's good enough that if that guy just does his job at a minimal level, Brady would be able to operate in the offense and throw the ball around. So, yeah, I think what Tom Brady wants to know is that Bill Belichick is invested in getting him people around him that Brady believes he can win with. That's the key. It's not who Bill thinks. It's who Brady thinks. Which is why I think yep. the analogy works, because it's not about what you think. It's about what I think about what you think. That's that's right. Um we're, but, of course, the, th the threat of going somewhere else always looms and, and, and applies pressure. Uh, you mentioned to me the other night that you thought that Belichick actually boxed Brady out of his go-to place, which would have been San Francisco. Yeah, the mistress that would have lured him in a situation like this and where they would have clearly given him a three-year deal because he's the hometown guy would have been San Francisco. So in sending old Jimmy G there... Because he's from there. Yep, it takes that out of the equation. And if you count Oakland, San Francisco, it really isn't, but... Might have been able to go to the Raiders had they stay there. They're going to Las Vegas. So that whole temptation is gone. And I think the way Bill Belichick has looked at this is he probably would have moved on from Brady way too early. Fans are looking at it and saying, like, Belichick, you got to move on because Brady's declining. I don't think the issues offensively were tied anything to Tom Brady right there. It was everyone else around him. The guy can still play at a very high level. You need to do some things differently around him. The running game needs to be more of a factor. How does the uh, Josh McDaniel situation um, affect this? He was down to what? Uh, at, at, well, as of now, it's Cleveland. It's, now. it's Cleveland, yeah. or is he going to go to Cleveland? I don't think so. So him, the owners are rube. So Brady and he get along swimmingly, correct? I yeah, I think so. I think there's a level of comfortability there. And look, if you're Josh McDaniels and you're catching wind, hey, Brady's going to come back. Bill's got a plan. We're going to be able to reload and figure this out. McDaniels will get more head coaching opportunities. I think the Carolina job would have been a better fit for him because he could have picked his quarterback. He could have brought in his own general manager. Whereas in Cleveland, it's a crooked owner of the guy from Jimmy Haslam was wrapped up in that pilot flying J mess. This guy's a world-class rube, and he's jamming analytics people onto football coaches, and football coaches don't want to think that way. So I just don't think there's a match. I could be wrong, but I don't think McDaniels ends up going there, especially if he starts to catch wins that there's going to be one more last hurrah with this existing group because everybody will get everybody will be, be made whole. And there's always a cycle, right? There's always a, a carousel of three or four jobs opening up at, at the end of every year. No doubt. 
No doubt. And there's crazy owners who are willing to hand people a ton of money. And again, if McDaniels is a part of an offensive resurgence next year, and they go back to the high-flying ways like when they were with Gronk and everybody, then, again, they're all going to benefit from it. I don't necessarily think Tom Brady is tied into Josh McDaniels per se, but I do think it would make things much easier and a little easier on Bill Belichick as well because he can say to those guys on game day, go do your thing, I, let me deal with the defense. It sounds completely like you believe that this will be resolved. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I find it hard to believe. You start to just think about... Owner, offense, weapons, the money to pay Brady. And, you know, I kind of joke about this, but he's got to look at a strong-willed woman and say, oh, yeah, hon, by the way, I really know you want me to retire, but I'm going to go to Indianapolis and play now. And, oh, by the way, it's a three-year contract. She'll take a letter opener and stick it right in his neck. I mean, seriously, like, he's admitted he has to negotiate with her. So that is a factor. And I think coming back one year here is a little different than, oh, let's go to Vegas for three years or Indianapolis and, for three and, years. And his house sale and his acquisition in Greenwich, Connecticut. So ridiculous. No, no, no play. Dan, this is what rich people do, okay? Here, I said this to you off the air. Nobody freaked out when Brady owned a house in Manhattan and played here. And he flipped it for about $5 million. So, and then he went to California, right? So we've been down this road. It's what it's how rich people make more money. Gobs of real estate. Joe Judge, a Patriots special teams <sighs> and receiver guy, becomes the head coach of my New York football giants. Help me understand this. Okay. I think what is going on here is that the general manager of the Giants, Dave Gettleman, who we know has had some health issues, eventually he will be segueing out the door. Older guy. And I think the Giants are kind of preparing for that. Supposedly, Joe Judge walked in the room and blew the Giants people away. And it was ownership who were like, we got to, this is our guy. And they got burned on that rule a little bit, too, because Carolina jumped in with the massive offer to get the Baylor coach, Matt Rule, to go there. So they didn't want to get stuck holding the bag. They knew they liked Joe Judge, so they moved quickly to do it. But I think this is the beginning of a bigger transition in the Giants organization to where... If Joe Judge stinks, in two years they're going to blow everybody out. If Joe Judge is great in two years, Gettleman exits stage left, and Joe Judge becomes a guy who ends up getting a little more power within the Giants organization. He's, he's, there's like, he's a lot like Belichick. Are, are you bullish on this guy? Yeah. Um, you know, there are not a lot of – like, I've been around a ton of football coaches, and you get a BS detector, and a lot of them are full of bunk anyway. However, this guy's a little different. Like, he can sit down with you, and in ten minutes you're like – captivated by the guy. Same thing for Matt Rule. I've been around Matt Rule in his <clears throat> time at Temple with Sounds the American like, Athletic Conference. Rule's a little bit like a preacher. Leader of men, though. But that's the thing. Can you stand in front of the room and captivate people? And both of those guys have the ability to do that. All right. When we come back, the Red Sox, oh boy, what did they do next? What? The Red Sox cheated in 2018. That's the allegation. What's the what's the facts of, of this case in 60 seconds? A little bit like Spygate. So what was happening is teams were going to the video replay room to decipher and start to steal signs. Now in Houston, when Alex Cora was there as the bench coach, they did it in 2017 and sended the signals by hitting the drums and the trash cans and stuff. This was a little different. They would go into the video room, start to decipher the signs. Somebody would send sort of a nonverbal signal to second base, and then through player movements, they would tip it off to the batter. Uh, the fact that Alex Cora was involved in chicanery in Houston and now here in Boston is not good. I think baseball's got to come down hard on them. And you can't do it during the postseason because the Major, Major League Baseball puts an official in the replay room, so there is none of this that goes on. So it was regular season. I think Major League Baseball whacks Alex Cora pretty hard. Meaning? 50 games. Suspension. Yeah, they need to set. Look. Do the Red Sox you, then you, say, we, don't, we, we need a manager full-time, well, you got to go? These teams have Dan York money. Right? You find him, it doesn't matter, right? But <laughs> if, if, if you're pulling the manager off of the field, you're now making a kind of impact on a team that 
makes a manager think, do I really want to do this and do I want that kind of stain on my resume? Quickly, MLB also sent out a memo, a la Spygate with the Patriots. So there was a memo in all of this that Alex Cora shouldn't have been a part of it. He's the manager. It's going to fall on him. Uh, I just want you to say that again. These teams have Dan York money. That's right. I just want to see how it feels. Just, uh. Well, Dan, you know, John Henry here, and I can, you can come I would just on like to, I would, I'd actually like to be able to play the role of someone who thinks they've got that kind of money just for, thank you, that was a nice moment. Well, Dan, I'm sure was, Robert Kraft will be nice inviting moment. you and your thoughts yes. on how to manage the millions the Patriots have, make every year. I have, to, uh, I have to check my statement to come back to reality, but it was, not, it was, mm. a, it was a nice moment there. No doubt about it. What happened with this guy in his, in the beer can, the the Celtics camp? With the Celtic fan arrested after oh, beer can thrown? It was a bad call, and it was some dope who got liquored up and stuff like that and decided to huck something down there because he wasn't thinking straight. He can't be doing that. No. No. And then there's the PC Friars, 3-0 and in the league. Uh, it's, the ebb and flow of a college basketball season is just that. Yeah. Yeah, it's so we'll in, see. They were down. Now they're up. Great league start. They need to play great in the league to make the NCAA tournament. The the out of uh, conference losses were pretty bad this year, so they need a, an 11, 12 win run in the Big East and then go deep in the Big East tournament to have a chance to go to the NCAA's. Oh, I think 11 regular season wins might just do it. Maybe the league is supposedly seven or eight deep for bids. Right, but you got to overcome some really bad losses from some teams that won't be good at the end of the year that will be used against them. And the URI Rams are praying that PC continues to win because that helps their situation since they beat them. Of course, you hope Brown wins the Ivy League if you're a Ram fan. That's because right. That was a bad loss Very for the bad. Rams. Yep. And they're kind of like, who knows whether this is a make or break? So that's, it's fun though. And by the way, you know Brown. Between Brown and Bryant even playing well, we got a nice fertile ground for college basketball around here right now. To me, Bryant may have the best chance of winning their conference tournament at the end of the year and, going and to making the show. it to the show. Wouldn't yeah. that be ironic? It would be, right? I mean, imagine of all the teams that we have in the state and maybe the one that goes from Rhode Island might be Bryant. Could be Brown. They could win the Ivy tournament. Right. The Ivy's not great this year. Who wins the national championship in college football? Oh, LSU. I won. Hey, you know, meet some taters, you know, Ed Orsman, I'm the coach of LSU, you know, down there on the bayou. Did you ever hear that guy talk? He's the Forrest yeah. Gump of college football. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Are they giving? How many are they giving? Uh, I want to say LSU is a healthy six to seven point favorite, I think, because everybody's all over Clemson. So I should get my sports app out right now, my R.I. Spang sports app right mm -hmm. now, and give the points? Uh, maybe so. I, it'll probably move a little bit before uh, Monday night, but I think LSU gets it done. Everybody loves Clemson because old Dabo, Dabo. Dabo, Dabo, own it up. You know, hey, I'm Dabo, Dabo, got a good quarterback. It's these southern hillbilly weirdo football coaches that you just love to hear speak. That's what I like. I like the press conferences. High On one scoring, side, Forrest high Gump. scoring game? Uh, yeah, probably. They, these games tend to get into the 30s, I would think. LSU's got a really good defense. However, Clemson's got a really good quarterback. Could be the number one pick in the draft. And no, Trevor Lawrence. No doubt about LSU. It's a lock. For no, you. I think LSU wins it because the, the the quarterback uh, is having a, the Heisman winner is having a heck of a year. All right, Joe Burrow, baby. All right, there you go. We like your lottery commercials, by the way. They're fun. Oh, thank you. Yeah, very good. Yeah. yeah, I'm like 30 pounds heavier than those. Need to shoot more. Thank you for your expertise. You're very kind to share uh, your time with me. Talk about that Dan York money thing again. I like that. Dan wow. York money. Yeah. I'm telling you. We'll see if a bit. Oh, final word next. Dan York money. I like the way that sounds. Have a great weekend. Bye.